see, don't marry for love. Marry for purpose. Say purpose. Because if you marry for purpose, there will always be love. Because when you stand before God, marriage is for earth, it's not for eternity. There is no marriage in heaven. And when we stand before God, then you are not going to give an account for love, for passion. You give an account for what? Purpose. So, before, before you say yes to a man or a woman, you have to check the person and find out. If the person has what it takes when it comes to where you are going because a lot of people marry for where they are and not for where they are going if you marry for where you are a time will come watch this watch this you know what the problem most of the time is apart from first ignorance and we not knowing why we are marrying and who we marry so most times there is conflict of destiny somebody say conflict of destiny so the most, the Bible says that thou shalt not yoke the donkey and the cow. You know that? Don't yoke the donkey and the cow. The cow is a very hard working animal. Donkey is very stubborn and lazy. So if you put a yoke between the neck of the two animals, there's problem on the field. Because the donkey has to see something as, you have to put something before the donkey as a reward. The cow doesn't care. The cow just works. Are you hearing me? So it's not just enough for somebody to say, I'm born again. No, 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 no. Because you can have two born again, spiritual people who shouldn't be together. And you put them together, and it's a donkey and a cow. And you can, you can watch them with scripture, it still won't work. Because donkey is donkey and cow is a cow. They are all wired differently. So don't be fooled about my spirituality or your spirituality. And it doesn't matter how many hours anybody speaking to and say, this is very spiritual. My children, my children, my children, my children, my children. Please. When you go into the house, there's no anointing there. There's no spirituality there. In the church, when you are under anointing, it's different. When the anointing lives, who are you? Turn to someone and say, you. When you are not anointed, what do you look like? That's the real thing. When the anointing lifts, and you're not under the anointing, and the, the inspiration is not there, and it's you, who are you? Turn to somebody and say, who are you? The Bible said, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. So turn to somebody and say, you look, you look great, oh, but who really are you? That is what we play with. 2 Corinthians 5, 16. 2 Corinthians 5, 16. Somebody pick it up. 2 Corinthians 5, 16. And 1 Samuel 16, 7. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yes. Henceforth. No we. Henceforth. No we no on, man after me. the henceforth. flesh. Henceforth. No we no man after the flesh. So look at somebody and say, what I'm seeing is the flesh. But what are you? And who are you? You know why? Because some people, they are, they are snakes. Yeah. Every human being is an animal. You don't know that? Yeah. yeah. Bishop, you don't believe that? Eh? Yeah. We all have all kinds of traces and animal nature in us. You are either a dog. Huh? Or a mosquito. <laughs> huh? Yeah. 
or you're a dragon. You know what dragon is? Violence, anger, terror, fears. What are you? And before you say yes to a man and a woman, you must know who they are. And not just that, but this thing called sex eh, is a very powerful thing. Because sex eh, is a place of exchange. Say exchange. Say in the place of sex, exchange take place. Transfer take place. Transfer of what? Sickness and diseases and infirmity, strength and weaknesses. At the place of sex, there is transfer. It's a place of exchange and transaction. Now, here, the Bible said, the man has no power over his body but the woman, and the woman has no power over her body but the man. You know what it means? It means that whoever you have sex with, you have ceded your power to the person and the person cedes their power to you and she becomes a partaker of whoever you are and your power she have access to your power you have access to his power and at that point if you are a witch if you are a witch you become the opening for the witch's community to access that person through you. So it's not that five minutes experience you are having on. No, 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 no. A lot of things happen within that five minutes. You can see your destiny and your future and you can partake of somebody's weakness and pain. You know, the Bible says, make no friendship with an angry man lest you become like him. So by sex, if somebody has a spirit of anger, you become a partaker of that anger. Transfer. So sex is a very serious thing. So whenever you see anybody trying to sleep with you, they, it's not just sex they want, they want your power. It's your power they want. If any man wants to sleep with you, young lady, it's either he wants your power, your glory, your honor, your destiny, your future. The Bible says, the virgin loves you because of your oil. You think Potiphar's wife was interested in Joseph? No. She wanted control over Joseph. She saw that this guy Joseph has so much power. And listen to what Potiphar said. Potiphar said, Joseph, you have control over everything I have to the extent that I don't even know what I have except you know it. And he said, I have given you power over everything I have except the food I eat. You know what he said? He said, the only thing I haven't given you power over is the food I eat. Apart from that, you are power over. And when the woman saw the power and the favor Joseph carried, and he saw that Joseph was young, young blood, old lady, he wanted the young blood. And their life is in the blood. So he wanted Joseph's life. So if you are not married and you are sleeping around and having sex, you are in trouble. Because you are exchanging your glory, your power, your anointing, your strength. And if the person you are sleeping with is not correct, you are in trouble. You are in big trouble because the person... You have ceded your power. I was telling a young pastor the other day, and I said, whenever you sleep with a woman, you have given her power over you and over your ministry. And I said, as long as you don't sleep with her, she has no power. Her power is the day you sleep with her. She has power. And from that day, 
whether you like it or not, familiarity is established and should be, her respect and honor for you will begin to diminish. You hear what I said? Yeah. One day my wife said to me that a lot of people say that, you know, they can't really tell me the truth because they are scared of me. Hey, I said, me, I'm scared of him. Me, I can't tell him the truth. So they were telling her. And she said, I, I want to tell you because everybody is scared and afraid of you. And I think I'm the only one who can talk to him. I said, you. You are the only one who can talk to me. So you are not afraid of me. <laughs> hey! I look at her. And I said, hey! Hey, hey! Hey, 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 give me back my power in the name of Jesus. What makes you feel like you, you are the only person who can talk to me? But the only reason why she's saying that is because I'm married to her. If I wasn't married, she would need appointments, clear security and everything before she gets to my office. So that is what says that. If you're a woman, it doesn't matter your position where you stand. As soon as you allow some, a man to sleep with you, your power is gone. Familiarity is established. The honor and the respect level reduces and changes. So this thing called sex is a very, very serious thing. You just don't go around and say, I'm lonely, I'm lonely, and then the man say, I'll marry you. No, no way. Marry you. He must have a license. It, you, nobody drives this car without a license. Are you hearing me? And, and the, please, there are a lot of guys in the church today. Eh? They know that a lot of you sisters, you are growing. You want to have babies. And you've been around for long. And all they have to do is to tell you they'll marry you now. And then your defenses are gone. That's the latest thing. I'll marry you. Do you care about marrying me? I've been thinking about you for some time now. You've just been on my mind. Ah, I can't shake you off. I can't even sleep. I'm developing insomnia. Having all kinds of strange dreams. When I close my eyes, I see you. I'm binding it and it's not binding. You are becoming unbindable. And you bind all those things. and You buy it and say, he say he wants to marry me. And then he tells you, one of my spiritual daughters came and told me, there was a guy in the church. He met the guy, and the guy said, uh, he has to taste her face. And I said, tell him, you are not Asana. <laughs> you know what Asana is? Yeah, there's a drink when you go to Mokola. I don't know, is it, uh, there's a name they call it. Asana, eh? Yeah, they call it Asana. You have to taste it first before you buy it. And I said, tell him, in the name of Jesus, your name is not Asana. Ain't nobody tasting anything here. There's nothing to taste, brother. Okay. You have to arm yourself, because the brothers, eh, they are very good nowadays. And they know what the sisters want to hear. So they'll tell you. And some of the sisters too, they are very good. They want spiritual women. So some of the sisters to become there, my children, my children, my children. <laughs> so no, no man after what? The flesh. First thing you must do is the investigation. You have to investigate the person well, well. Say, do, do diligent, do diligent. Because people pretend, oh, oh yeah. Women can pretend. Until the day you put the ring on and you say, I do. Bishop Boda will tell you, one of his sons is a prophet. He married. In this, was, was the wedding in this church? Uh, somewhere. On the honeymoon day, the lady said to the guy, you, you say you're a prophet. Tell us what she said. So I don't misquote it. She had gone to take a shower, powdered herself nicely so the man who was ready to perform. Mm -hmm. And she started laughing. Say, you. You say you're a prophet. You say, yes, I'm a prophet. You say, you don't know. I'm a witch. Say, hey! How did you get into my life? I said, the day 
I gave you that palm nut soup, that a bank coin, I trapped. He lost his anointing. So that marriage was never consummated. Those of you who love palm nut soup. <laughs> Some of you love bunu bunu. What, what was the soup I ate at the at the man? I lose myself from the power of Adam because I know the word is out there now that Papa he loves Adam. I release myself from the power of Adam. Don't try me; it won't work. I've delivered myself in the name of Jesus. I rebuke Adam in the name of Jesus. They have no power over me, so don't try; it won't work. Amen. So you got to check things, and I'm, I'm talking to Bishop that this thing, and we have to do it over and over. We can't just do it once or twice a year. It's serious. It's a very serious thing. Because if we don't do something, eh, there is trouble for the future. Our children, our sons, our daughters, our grandchildren. Because the greatest thing the enemy is using is ignorance. And, we, and hear me, if you want to be a doctor, you go to school, isn't it? You want to be a lawyer, you go to school. Whatever profession you want in this world, you go to school and you are educated about it. Is it not true? The only profession we don't get educated about is marriage. And it's the most important one in this world than anything else. Because marriage can make you or make you. It can. Oh, yeah. And hear me. Some people think that, oh, you know, uh, be careful you don't marry a demon and a devil and a witch. Hear me. Marriage eh, is not just about marrying a witch or a devil. You can marry a good person that you shouldn't be with and it won't work. I've seen very good people, two good people, and it's very clear that they are not meant to be with each other. The man is a good person, the woman is a good person, but they were not meant to be together because they are wired differently. They see differently, they think differently, they argue over everything, they fight over everything. The man won't stand up and the woman won't sit down. You hear what I said? That is Ahab. Ahab. Ahab won't stand up to be a man. And Jezebel won't sit down and shut her mouth and be a woman. So it doesn't matter what you do. That marriage, you can quote scripture, bind and loose, until the day Ahab decides to stand up and speak. And Jezebel, on her own, decides to sit down and shut her mouth. That marriage ain't going nowhere. And that is what it is. And in a house where the daughters see the mother always talking, controlling things, and the father is always sitting down, and it's the mother that is always standing and talking, they will grow up and become the same. And they will marry a weakening. They will marry a weak, a man that is weak, a man that can't stand up, and a man that won't speak out. And they will become the woman that will never sit down and will never shut him out. Because they grew up in a house where it was controlled. Even though there was a father and there was a man, it was the mother that controlled things. So they grow up and they become controlling women. And the young men, the men, also grow up and their understanding of marriage is that sit down, say nothing. Cede your power to the man, to the woman. Let her talk. So everything is a woman. The man never speak, never talk. So there is peace. That is no marriage. That is you setting authority. Say you setting authority. We got to do more of this. Because you see, when you have light, eh, it's very easy. I'm just telling you. When you have light, it's easy. It's simple. It's, it's less complicated when you have light. Because you can easily tell. I did some interview today. Eh? 
I interviewed two people over something. And the first person came and I spent, I don't know how many minutes, about 30 to 40 minutes with the first person. The second person, it was about 11, 12 minutes. As soon as the person said, I had one, two, three, four questions, and I, was, I made up my mind. I knew exactly what I was dealing with. I didn't need to worry the Holy Spirit. I didn't need to say, Holy Spirit, move me now, move me now. I didn't have, we worry the Holy Spirit about some things. Let's use the Holy Spirit on weightier matters, see, weightier matters, like marriage. Before we enter prayer, eh, I want you to understand that this thing called marriage is not simple. Oh. It's very complicated. Because you can go and join with somebody you shouldn't join with. Somebody who is going this way. And you are going that way. So when you say, Lusakadandu ala hasianda amundi, you say, hey, kadundu la mandu sadan. You fire this way, fire that way. Hey, hey. I said, my baby. Hey, Jesus. Do you hear what I said? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Conflict of destiny. Somebody say, conflict of destiny. That is where the problem always is. And I've seen people like that. Conflict of destiny. Some of them, they will live in it and die. And they will never fulfill their destiny. Till they die for so many reasons because you see getting into marriage is very simple and easy but getting out is very complicated especially if you have children with the person you are yoked with to the person as long as those children are alive and there the rest of your life whether you like it or not you deal with the person when you have children with the person ah, yeah 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 Say, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You are looking at me. Look at me well. It's not that very simple at all when there are children involved. Even when there are no children, eh? Breaking, separating is tough. But when there are kids, it's very complicated. It's not, it's very crooked. You have to pray this prayer three times a day. Every crooked path, may straight. Every crooked path, may straight. Every crooked path, may straight. Every mountain and hill, may plain. Every valley, exalted. You have to pray that prayer every day. Before you eat, breakfast, lunch, dinner, before you sleep, every crooked path, may straight. Crooked path, may straight. So it's not that simple or complicated. Look at 1 Samuel 16. 7. 1 Samuel 16, 7. From the outside. <clears throat> but the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or the, on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Tell somebody, don't be moved by what you see. Oh yeah, I've missed it in life. I've missed it a lot of time in life and in ministry by just, by just admiring people from the surface. Oh yeah. People can deceive you. Pastors, prophets, men of God, women of God, they can fool you. I'm telling you. I Eh? Somebody say ice. ice. Tell somebody, don't be impressed. Oh. Yeah, tell somebody, don't be easily impressed by looks, by gifts, by anointings. No, 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 no. Don't say no, 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 no. Don't go there. Say go beyond the looks. Go beyond the gifts. Go beyond the anointing and find out who is behind the gift. Who is the person behind the anointing? 
Yeah, that's what you should look out for. And you'll be shocked that the person behind the gift that you're anointing is a frog. It's a tiger. It's a snake. Some people, they are fire. Fire will burn you. Have you heard that song? Fire will burn you. Tell someone, be careful, fire don't burn you. Be careful, fire don't burn you. Fire. Gifted. Together. Pe, 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 pe. But they are dangerous. Snakes. Have together. You can't find your, your phone. She can't find her phone. Is, is there any phone around somewhere, please? Okay, check and see if it's hers. You know? So it's very, very important before we pray and close today, I want you to know that marriage is a very serious thing. And, and I think that we need, we need to tarry. We need like two, three days. Morning, afternoon, night. And we need, we need Bishop Obodai like a whole day, this man, from morning to night, waking him. Yeah. You, you see... You see that gray hair on him? Those gray hair, they are not just gray. Oh. It's information about marriage. <laughs> eh? He knows a lot about this man. I've known him since he, when you were 15, eh? From when you were in Achimota. Yeah. Achimota, eh? Yeah. I've known him. I've known him over, over 40 years. Yeah. He and Bishop Dad, the, the Bishop Dad was around the same age, about 15. Yeah, say, well, yeah, about 15 when I met them at Achimota. Used to go and preach there. So that gray hair you are seeing there is, we have to pull all the gray hair to disappear. <laughs> Don't leave it there like that. I have to scrape it and take all those information. So we are going to spend more time this year mm, to get you information, education, and knowledge. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. And when you get the kinds of information which your both I and others have, eh, anytime any woman stands before you, you can, your, your MRI scan eyes will scan them. And look at this, say 419. <laughs> now, there are certain women you must not marry and certain men you shouldn't marry. And then I have another book coming out. The nine different types of marriages. Nine different types of marriages. So there is no two marriage that is the same. No two marriages. So you can't judge my marriage based on your marriage experience because no two marriages is the same. It's raining. You are blessed. Raining at this time in January. It means that some of you this year you said your blessing is flowing. The gates of heaven is open. There is an outpouring of the blessing of right marriages, proper marriages, God ordained marriages. You will be distangled. God will disentangle you this year. In the name of Jesus, say yes. Sit down for a minute. The other thing you must understand about sex is this. When through marriage, it's not when you come and stand here, you put the ring and say, I do, I do, I do. No. Through marriage is sex. The two became one. And the two shall become one. Not through the ring. It is when you go home and you sleep with the man or the woman, that is when you are married. So if before you come and stand here. You've had sex all over the place. Hmm? And God has forgiven you because you have confessed. But you haven't broken the soul tie. Because anybody you sleep with, your soul is attached to the person. So if you slept with ten men and you ask for forgiveness, you are forgiven. But if the soul tie is not broken, you are, your soul is still attached to ten men. Then you marry a man who having slept with even one woman before. And you come to the altar then you go home you you know how many people are in the bed 11 
11 men. And you, the woman, you are in bed with a man who is a virgin with the experience of 11 different kinds of men experience. And here is the man, virgin, Onim She. And you are expecting the man to deliver. And he's low energy. And you are high energy. High performance, low performance is the beginning of the problem of the marriage. From day one, we are failing. You wear him. He doesn't reach anywhere, not then he goes to sleep, he's snoring. And you are sitting down there with the experience of 10 men. And you look at him like I should take something and break your head. Lazy man. You know why he's lazy? Because you, you are Davi. Magajia. You know things. And the mind doesn't know Shelley. And some of you, you don't tell the man that me, I'm Davi. I know things. I know things. You, what do you know? Let's talk about what you know. So you know that the man, he doesn't know anything. So if that is the way you have to go, you have to go and see Bishop Obodai so he can teach him some things. Because Bishop knows that he knows things, pa. I'll tell you, he knows things. So the man can be educated. Because if he's not educated, hey, not trouble. And there are some men too. Eh? They are amagans. Talk me. Slept with everything from mosquito to flies to cocodene. You come and marry him, you're a virgin. And the day of the wedding, you go to the honeymoon, and the man is expecting you to be a bad girl. And you too, you're a good girl. You don't know what it means to be a bad girl. And he has all these bad girls performances on his subconscious mind and expecting you to deliver. And he has come armed with the experiences of the past. He won high performance. And here you are. You don't even know low performance. That is the beginning of the sorrow of the marriage. He's married you, but he's still looking around. You remember Jacob was in the tent with Leah and he was looking for Rachel. He wanted Rachel, but his father-in-law swerved him. May nobody manipulate your marriage. May there be no swapping with your marriage. And he was married to Leah. And you know what? Few things. He played the father, and the father-in-law played him. But this was the thing. This is why marriage is very difficult. Because you see, Jacob didn't know it was Leah he was marrying. So can you marry and not know what you are marrying? Yes. Tell somebody, you can marry and not know what you've married. You can. Yeah. Mama, have you been married before? Yeah, you. You've been married before? Yeah. Bishop, find out from her. How long was she married? You see the way she's sitting there and looking at me and listening to me. She knows some things. Those of you who have been married before, mercy. Eh? Those who have been married before, they know things. Hey. When a man wants a woman, the way he can rap. Hey. Some of them, they can rap. And some of the brothers, eh, they are smooth like anointing oil. And some of the sisters, they are smooth like butter on, 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 on bread, toast bread. Yeah. I can't hear you. Oh. Hey, Bali. You know. Crown four. I can't hear you. It's just that when I hear your voice, I can't even do 
Obua ba che o akwa nchere o di atosu hmm bishop bishop uh isando tell us some of the women you shouldn't marry and tell us some of the men you shouldn't marry listen write it down it's coming out soon it's in my book go ahead bishop some of the men you shouldn't marry some of the men you shouldn't marry listen neighbor 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 it means foolishness go ahead and then there was amnon amnon that name you see so what you do is apart from, until the book come out you must investigate the character of this man and you see certain signs and when you see those signs it doesn't matter who he is what car he brings how good he smells and he looks like run tell somebody run no 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 do it like i'm doing Say, run Bishop, go ahead. But friend, the one to another one to avoid is Ahab. 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 Find out about Ahab. You see, hear me. Anywhere you see an Ahab, there's a Jezebel. And Jezebel is a woman no man must marry. She's domineering, she's manipulative, she's treacherous. Hey. And there are Jezebel in the church. There are some here right now. Turn to somebody and say, are you a Jezebel? Then ask somebody, are you a Ahab? Go ahead. Then there was also Solomon. Solomon. Final Solomon. Yeah, no woman must marry Muslim. Solomon. What about that? Solomon's appetite for sex is so high. And Solomon, he slept around with everybody. So you can't satisfy him. You hear me? It doesn't matter what show and performance you put. Solomon is not satisfied. Solomon. And there are men like that. They are never satisfied. And there are women too who are not satisfied. High level sexual appetites. That's what happened to um, Samson. He shouldn't have gone to the first place was Timna. Eh? He went to Timna and met a woman in Timna. And the woman in Timna injected him. That's what sex does. You are injected. Gave him a sex virus. And his appetite for sex. That is the thing about drugs. You touch it and you keep developing more appetite for it. That's the problem with this young generation. They are touching things they shouldn't touch. I'm even told that right now, and they go to graveyard. Somebody sent me a videotape from Celerion, where they dig the dead bones of dead people and they grind it into powder and they mix it with something. And when you smoke it, it, it makes you high. This generation is in trouble. We have to pray for the youth of today. I'm very, very concerned about them. The youth of today. Including my own children and my grandchildren. Because the things out there is scary. Things that couldn't touch us in our time. This generation, they are in big trouble. Listen, they put things in drinks, juice, juice, coke. They put things in it. Chocolate. Chocolate. They put things in chocolate. So I tell my children, my grandma, I say, listen, be careful of all this sleeping overnight and going to parties. Because by the time you wake up in the morning, you are sleeping somewhere. You didn't know how you got there. We had a young babe, a young girl at our rehab. Young girl. She went out with her friends. And they put something in her juice 
and she drank it, she became high, and all the guys slept with her. And she got hooked to it, and she steals her mother money, who sell anything to go and get high. She's run from the house. They couldn't contain her, they can't find her. They brought her to our drug rehab. We started working with her and she ran away. We've called police, we've looked everywhere. They said, oh, she was just here, she was just here. We can't find her. Brilliant young girl, she's been destroyed. This generation is in trouble. So when it comes to marriage, you shouldn't play at all. You must check the mother of the man, especially if he's a man, the father, the grandfather, great-grandfather, uncles, cousins who are men. Check it all out. And if she's a woman, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, aunties, sisters, cousins that are women, check them out. Look at the family tree. Investigate it. Because marriage is too complicated and it's too dangerous to just say, I'm in love. You are in what? Don't fall in love. Walk into love. Don't be in love. Stand in love. So if you have to run, you run. I'm in love. What love? He loves me. Share. He loves what? You. He said he loves me. He's very sensitive. He calls me anytime I'm down. He knows the right thing to say. You see, Papa. What right thing? He study book. There are things in books that tells brothers and sisters what women want to hear, what men want to hear. Are you okay? Why? I was feeling you. Yeah, I've been feeling you for some days now. I just want to check on you and find out if you are okay. Now, you know, if you need anybody to talk to, you know I'm here. I'm here for you. Just give me a call. You haven't called me, and I know you are dealing with something. I know you are very private. You don't want to tell anybody. But I've told you, you can count on me. You can trust me. I'm here for you. Do you hear me? Just call me. Yeah, call me. Promise me. Will you call Watch you. Tell somebody, watch you. I'm going to tell you how to Go ahead, Bishop. Let's finish and pray. So the kind of women men should avoid. Uh -huh. We have Jezebel. Because of her craftiness, wickedness. Her ultimate goal is to control. All yeah. these are in Papa's book. Control you. Control your emotions, your thoughts, your mind, your bank account, your checkbook, your money, everything about control. When you dress, you know, no, you can't wear this. Change. Change the shoe. Change your haircut. You can't do this. You can't do it. Control. Pa. You can't control me. I'll rebel. Oh, crap, 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 crap. I will raise an objection. Mommy, I didn't. Una woman. Cartons are mixed in the cabin. Who coat them as my coat? Who bind them as my bind? There was this uh, one of my pastors, she's a woman, and she and the husband had issues. And the man says, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And she says, eh, You bind me, I double bind you. They all know scripture. That is a serious thing. When it's not working, everybody knows scripture, and you are binding them, double binding. And somebody say, I bind you, say, I bind you, I command you remain bound. Hey. Go ahead, Bishop. Well, you mentioned Delilah. Uh-huh. And then there's um... Delilah. Destiny killer. Tell someone, don't let anybody kill your destiny. Oh. Yeah. Delilah, and Delilah is not just, Delilah is not a woman, no. Delilah is a spirit. Anything that you know is killing you, the thing is killing you, but you can't let it go. That's what drugs does. That's what this thing called drugs and addiction does. Addiction to any kind of thing. 
nicotine, <clears throat> uh, alcohol, any kind of drug, or sex, or pornography. <clears throat> Somebody, some of you like porno. They are looking at me. Some of you, if I take your phone right now and I access your phone, I will see some things. Turn to somebody and say, what is on your phone? What is on your phone? Yeah. I have to pray for this generation. This generation is in big trouble. I'm telling you. Finish, Bishop. And there's Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife. Old ladies who like young black. Thank you, Bishop. Hmm? What do you call them? The old ladies who like young boy. Sugar mommy. There are a lot of sugar mommies out there. And you young men. Eh? There are sugar mommies and sugar daddies in the church. Not too far away. Yeah, right in the church. Tell somebody, are you a sugar mommy and sugar daddy? Right. Yeah, but there's Lord's wife always looking back. Lord's wife. Always taking you back. We we'll never go forward. A distinction to God's command and voice in your life. Go ahead. Then there's David's wife. David's wife, Mika. Arrogant to the core. Proud to the core. Kana. Somebody say Kana. Kana. Canality. No spirituality. Go ahead. Yeah, but we've mentioned. We've mentioned everything. Okay, for now. We're going to go into prayer. Give me Isaiah 7 and 1. We have prayer meeting tonight. So those of you who are not doing anything at home, you are not going anywhere. Stay and pray. More prayer will help you. Some of you have nothing. Some of you are rushing to go and watch porno. <laughs> you know it's only Papa who can say that. <laughs> you can't do me anything. And if you pray, I'll block If you try and pray again, I'll block it. <laughs> if you try to bind me, I'll double bind you. <laughs> Amen? Go ahead. When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was Stop discovered. there. Do you see that the iniquity never came up until it was time for Israel to be healed? Sometimes, eh, one of the reasons why you must disclose things, and you need a lot of grace and wisdom, you know, to talk about some things, and let the guy really know who you are, and let the woman know who you are. Because there are some things when you don't disclose them, and you keep them, at the Kairos moment, it can come up. I had a situation with one of my daughters, she was in this church, and he was, they were dating, he and one of my sons, I brought them, they were dating. And everything was going on very well until a particular time the family of the boy started investigating the girl. And there were some things that happened when she was in school that she didn't disclose it. And when the family got to know and investigated and told the girl and told the boy, and the boy asked the girl and he said yes. And he said, but why didn't you tell me? He said, well, I didn't think it was necessary. And she told me, I said, but you should have told him. Cut a long story so that I ended the marriage. I did everything. The, the guy said, Papa, my family won't allow it. They were good for each other. Up to today, it didn't go well. They've all moved on and married, but they should have been together. Any iniquity that will be used at your Kairos moment and at the prime of your life to sabotage you to disadvantage you let that iniquity be disannulled by the blood of Jesus disannulled stand on your feet we are going to pray right now I, I want you to make room now we are going to, we are going to go into prayer we are going to, so make room make room everywhere make room we are going to go into serious prayers now yeah yeah. You can move your chairs back to where you took it from And then you can come forward without chairs Come forward around the altar without your chairs 
put your chairs back where it was and then come come without your chairs yeah and I'm in be careful come forward now without your chairs just come make sure Thank you. Please come forward with all your chairs. If you have a bag, you can bring your bag and put it at your right at your feet. Security, please keep an eye on everything. And I want the cameras rolling all over. I want the cameras on everybody. If you see anybody that is not praying and looking around and is not praying, put the camera on them. Security investigate that person quickly many are called but few are chosen keep coming please keep coming lift up your right hand say any iniquity and any error and anything in my bloodline from my father's house my mother's house and my background that will sabotage my destiny and disadvantage me and deny me before and doing and even after my Kairos time and my prime of life. Today by the blood of the covenant, let it be disannulled. Let it be disannulled. Put your hands together and pray that prayer. Somebody clap your hands and pray that any agreement, any iniquity, anything that holds you in the spirit from your bloodline that disadvantages the will of God for your life. As you clap your hands and pray, let the potency in the blood reverse the power of iniquity, ordinances and curses that have been projected from your bloodline that will deny you access to the next dimension of the will of God concerning your marriage. Let the iniquity be pardoned. Let the blood be activated by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, we deploy the blood. We deploy the blood against all ordinances, against all curses, against all family homes that hold us in the spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, Marco Shadabalo Sibradahas, Liko dini mi kapala basua rakato shaba dini wata man dini bini mi yato makon shaba di branto skipa rakato shaba libata labron dini bi kato yakon da barosi apas rakato shaba desaya let the power in the blood enter our background anything that hold us bound anything that disadvantage us as a result of the family iniquity as a result of family transgression we activate the power of the holy ghost in the mighty Hello. name of jesus by the Be power good. of god you see iniquity eh, is also bad character i dealt with the situation many years ago in this church where the woman and the man came for counseling and the woman said she has never said sorry before in her life and all the man was asking for was an apology of a situation that took place the woman said i can't say sorry i'm sorry so eventually the marriage broke down and the woman was angry with me and i said angry with me what did i do he wanted me to sack the man from the church and i said i can't do that i can't do that we've all come here for salvation you had opportunity to apologize he said you can't apologize so the, and the man said papa that is how she is She's arrogant, she quarrels, she fights, quarreling 
eh, and complaining is an iniquity. Whatever the iniquity is, where you are concerned. And there are some men, they are lazy to the call. They never work. Anything they start, they are lazy. They sleep and they want the woman to go and work and bring the money. Any iniquity in your bloodline, any iniquity in your life that will sabotage you at the Kairos moment and in the prime of your life, let it be intercepted. In the name of Jesus. It's an all uprooted, arrested. Put on your prayer. Father, in the mighty name.